it's Miss Carm here, and today we're going to dive into the topic of prayer. We have so many questions about prayer, and sometimes it can kind of feel like we're doing it wrong. Even the disciples who were literally with Jesus asked him if he'd teach them how to pray. I want to set the record straight. Prayer is talking to God or just sitting in his presence. The Loop Show breaks it down into a few simple realities. So let's watch together and learn what it means and looks like to pray. On this episode of The Loop Show Likes You, we're talking car doors, big prayers, and potatoes. Hang, Hang on, on for the, the loop. loop. Four, three, two, one. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. What's up, four wheelers? What was that? I don't know, I'm trying something new. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ricky. <laughs> and I'm Jamie, and this is The Loop Show Likes You. This is your show. We got your postcards, and we made a whole show about it. And we're not just getting postcards. Now we're getting letters and pictures. Look at this. Woo! Thanks, guys. Yeah, these are handmade postcards. Look at this, handmade. And we have a letter from Ethan in North Carolina and Colton in Edmond, Oklahoma. Hey, Colton. So this one is from New Jersey and it says, I like Jamie. <gasps> oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> you, for, you forgot to, <laughs> to say you, you, you like Ricky, but that, that's, that's fine, I guess. <laughs> what can I say? People have always liked me in New Jersey. Okay, so this one says, I broke my toe tripping in a pile of leaves. Ouch. We're, Wow, okay, so like heavy leaves or? Maybe out? their parents keep their buried treasure in their pile of leaves. Oh, see. That could be it. That makes sense. How about this one? It says, I can't sneeze. <sighs> no. That sounds like a superpower. <laughs> Not being able to sneeze, because sneezes are so uncontrollable. The fact that you can't, I refuse to sneeze. I never will. I have really loud sneezes that sometimes make my friends upset. <laughs> no, no, I have really loud sneezes that sometimes scare my friends. Uh, That's the truth. What, was that, what would that sneeze sound like, Jamie? Oh. <laughs> Achoo! Ah! Just, Help! Oh, no, now it's all over my hand. Oh, no, Jamie. You're not supposed to sneeze into your hands. You're supposed to sneeze into your elbow. This is actually why we're social distanced right now, is because of my sneezes. Yeah, it's really gotten out of control. <laughs> uh, so Bailey wrote, I run four and a half miles every day. That's dedication. That's longer than a 5K. You run longer than a 5K every day. Wow. That's cray cray. Even just thinking about running four and a half miles every day makes me exhausted. Good on you, Bailey. Well done. <laughs> This one says, I had my pinky shut in a car door. Oh no! Ouch! Did it fall off? Like, I have never done that before. Or does it just kind of dangle? I have once. Uh, oh, you know! Yeah, so I've closed. <laughs> so it's it, it's weird. I, so, finger completely intact, oh, but that's like, good. it pinches very deeply. The way I had it, I was just like closing doors, like, ah! Ah! <laughs> And so then you open the door immediately and you freak out a little bit. Do you put ice on it? How do you fix it? Um, you just never get into cars ever again. Oh. And it saves you for next time. Oh, and we also got this. You know, sometimes we just say things and we don't expect people to follow through with it. But you did. We made a reference about writing us a letter on the back of the Declaration of Independence. And right here, someone wrote us a note on the back of the Declaration of Independence. It says, Dear Loop. And that was it. No, it actually says, Dear Loop, can you do the Gubby versus Real challenge? And we did. So thank you. Thank you so much for sending us this. If you want to send us a letter or any other federal documents. Uh, we have our address in the description below or on our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your postcards. We love learning more about you. And here on The Loop Show, we also love learning how we can grow closer to God. We know that reading the Bible is a great way to learn more about God. And prayer is important too. Whenever I don't know what to pray, I remember what our good friend Allison taught us. Yeah, let's look at that. Prayer is not like this complicated speech. It's just when humans talk to God. You know, a lot of times it's easy for us to feel lost when it comes to prayer, because it's like, 
How long am I supposed to pray? Am I even doing this right? Thank you, Father. Jesus, yo, homie, it's been a while. But you know, like, I still love you. I'm for you. Like, I'm about you. Like, if I open my eyes, like, just a little bit, like, you know, like, if I peek around when everyone's praying, like, does that cancel out everyone else's prayers, too? I'm a little worried about that. If I wake up and say amen, is that cool? How long is this thing supposed to be? I uh, I said, Jesus, please help my dog. And um, I've got I've got nothing else. How do people, I don't know how people go for like five minutes. I don't know how people, people pray for an hour. An hour? How's that possible? And they're not sleeping? Is it amen or like amen? I'm confused. So many questions. And it's easy for us to feel like you're doing it wrong. Maybe you've noticed that Jesus, he just didn't pray occasionally. He had a prayer life. He knew that prayer was a life-changing, life-saving survival skill. He knew that prayer had the power to change things. That is the power to change us and connect us with God. And his friends, they noticed this. One of his disciples are like, Jesus, like you're kind of good at this. You know, how do we pray? Like, would you show us? In Matthew 6, verses 9 through 13, this is what Jesus said. Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. Don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Matthew 6, 9 through 13. If you feel like you don't know what to say, or maybe you feel like you're not doing prayer right, try praying a navigational prayer. I want you to think back, up, in, around, forward. Everyone say it with me. Back, said everyone. Everyone say it with me. Up, in, louder, around, forward. All right, chant it all together. Here we go. Back, up, in, around, forward. Back, up, in, around, forward. Look back. What has God already done in your life that you need to say thank you for? Look up. Remember who God is. He's the creator. He's the one who loves you. Look in. What do you need to ask for forgiveness for? How do you want him to change you? Look around. Who in your life is in need? Look forward. Tell him your hopes. Tell him your dreams. And we're actually gonna get to practice this right here, right now. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to find a space where you can just kind of focus. If it helps you, go ahead, close your eyes. You can pray out loud or you can pray in your head. And when you do, I want you to let these directions help guide your prayers as you talk to God. Look back. What has God done for you? Tell him thank you. Look up. Who is God? Tell him how good he is. Look in. What needs to change? Ask him to help you. Look around. What do the people around you need? Pray for them. Look forward. What do you hope happens next? Back, up, in, around, forward. That's a really good reminder of one way we can grow closer to God through prayer. All right, Loopsters, now it's time to have a little chat about some of the suggestions we've been getting for challenges lately. Most of them have been snake-based. Wear a snake, put a snake on your head, teach a snake how to dance, by draining his claw, can you snake it? It's almost as if they haven't seen the very first episode of the Loop Show. We've worn snakes on our face before. Some of us more than others. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. No. Yeah, I think y'all match today. Oh, you do. look at that. Yeah. One of us has to change. I never thought I'd be here today, holding and being around multiple. <laughs> oh my gosh, Lucy. 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 Oh my gosh,
Oh, she just went right for it. And you are doing so great, Ricky. It is in your glasses. Uh, oh my gosh. This is great. Ricky, you are the man. I'm having so much fun right now. And it dropped significantly. Have... Maybe we should do it again. Maybe we should do worms again. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel! Wheel cards, wheel cards. It has wheels, it has cards. It has cards. cards. Wheel of cards. Okay. It says, peel a potato using only your mouth? Huh. Okay. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's a crazy potato. It's a loose peel potato. A pota You'll have two minutes to peel as much of that potato as possible using only your mouth. Whoever has the most peeled at the end doesn't have to take the big bite. Oh, okay. Well, okay. <laughs> Go! Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> okay. I'm making some headway. It's a, it's a potato way. Am I peeling it? Is this happening? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lurk chop. Did I have something in my teeth? I really want to win! I really want to win! <sighs> I get exhausted just trying to get out the tail. <laughs> what if we tie? Mm-mm. Oh, yeah. Gross. Disgusting. Uh. 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 Gross. Disgusting. <laughs> I feel so silly when I spit it. Uh. It's like making potato confetti. I do not feel <laughs> great. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. Is that how they used to peel <laughs> potatoes before they invented the potato peeler? <laughs> My ancestors must have, because I'm doing really good. Huh? Stop. Oh. Oh, good day. <laughs> what? I'm embarrassed about how well I did. That is a big piece of okay. potato spit hanging out of your mouth. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. This, Jamie, you did an amazing <laughs> job. How even? I can't tell who actually did better though. It looks like you did good too. I I don't know. You seem to have clearer lines, and I definitely <laughs> have way more. I tried to treat it like a corn on the cob. This is so much faster than using a potato peel. <laughs> so now the loser has to eat the other person's potato. Is that? <laughs> I think that you would just have to take a bite out of your own. <laughs> is that it? Is that the big bite? No. Okay, moment of truth. <laughs> judges, judges who remember that, you know, effort was put in, <laughs> technique. Yay, I did it, I won! I'm the best peeler of the potato with my mouth. Good, good job, Jamie. Well, here we go. <laughs> go, Ricky, go. Oh, oh no! Oh. <laughs> did, ah. you, did you break a tooth? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, this is the texture of potatoes? It's like it's biting into an apple. I didn't know potatoes were just like this. That is not what I was expecting at all. Come on, Loopsters. That looked like a medium bite to me. What do you think? <laughs> yes! Medium? Yeah? I think he needs to take a big bite. Woo! <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like a carrot. That's a big bite. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Whoever you are who came up with this challenge, this is definitely one of the craziest challenges we've ever done. So, uh, th thank you. I really liked it. A genuine thank you. Okay, you know what time it is. We like your challenges, but we also really like your big questions. So, your question is, what do we do in our free time besides read the Bible and pray? Let's take a look. What do we do on our free time besides read the Bible and pray? To answer that question, let's go ahead and jump into the Bible. So Acts 2 verse 42 says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. The believers studied what the apostles taught and they shared their entire lives together. They also ate and prayed together. So going back to the question of what we do on our free time besides reading the Bible and praying, here's two things that you can do. The first one is to know God. The second one is to enjoy life. In Acts 2, we read that the early believers studied the teaching of the apostles and prayed, but they also shared their lives together. Hey, excuse me. 
So there's a lot to learn about who God is by participating in the world around you. The Bible calls this shared life a fellowship. So the question is, how do we share our lives together during this year where we can't really be around together, we have to social distance, and it's hard to have community? Maybe you used to see your friends at school every single day and now it's completely different. So here's some tips. First, we thank God for letting us have the tools and the technology to meet digitally instead of not even meeting at all. Second, we have to recognize that it always takes work. Isolation is always going to be the easier choice, whether it's inside or outside of a global pandemic. But just like it takes work to know God, it takes effort to get to know the people around you. So use your free time to invest in your friendships. Safely meet together with others, physically or digitally. Get creative. How can you laugh, eat, serve, and build during a time like this? Everybody wants to be in a group that has community, right? So recognize that we are all made in God's image and seek community. You can grow through who you know. Wow, that rhymed. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I have for you today. Hope you guys have a great week. Studying God's Word and spending time in prayer is only part of our journey as followers of Jesus. Share your lives together. Invest in solid friendships. Thank you for sending us your big questions, your challenges, and things we should know about you. Keep it up. We want to see your artwork and read your letters. Here are some ways that you can do that. Uh, go whisper this to the wind. Loop Show likes you. Or you could go find a gnome in his home. You could put a note under his hat and then send your gnome from his home to meet up with our gnome over here and he can deliver the letter to us. You only know what you know. Okay, I know we've done some really crazy things, but here's a real thing you can do. You can send potatoes in the mail. So carve a message with your teeth on a potato and take it to your local post office and they'll actually mail a potato to the Loop Show. Now thinking of it, I think we're actually gonna get a lot of potatoes. I immediately regret this. Mm, I love potatoes. Send us all the potatoes. We love you guys. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride. Do what only you can do. With one word, the mountains move. When you breathe, the dead rot. And the bones come back to life. There is power in this room. Come on. Say it. Where the spirit Street.